Nice. Welcome, welcome. Another demo play of a Biscuta, chapter one, The Descent. Or, yeah, I think it, The Descent is the correct term for it. Hello. Anywho, welcome back. This is Cosmic Fancy playing the part two, chapter one, The Descent of Obscura, or Obscura, however they pronounce it. I still have not checked. Time to wait. Um, this is the continuation. Obviously, that's why I said it's a part two. Uh, my my demo demo playthrough of the visual novel Obscura. If you guys haven't seen the first one, I'm gonna link the video somewhere around you or in the description. Just check it out, just to like keep tabs and whatever of I previously um, have done or did. Warning! Um, so far, this game is rated. There is a tag for maturity for this, so I'm pretty sure that things are gonna be quite. If not spicy, maybe gory, or slightly offending for other people, I don't think it's that offending. Uh, rather, probably within the lines of decency. Um, this is a, quite a diverse game. Either way, let's dig in, maybe? Um, also, a fair note, I might have forgotten my voices for some of the characters, so please excuse me if I voice them weirdly from chapter, from part one. Oh, we're in here, out. Okay. So I exactly do not remember what is happening, but I do recall that I, I, I was roaming around the streets of the marketplace, underground marketplace, and um, what else? I think I was supposed to go somewhere. It's like a temple, and then all of a sudden there was like shenanigans somewhere, and I was quite curious, so I checked it out, and there is actually a person running away from someone. Eventually, we bumped into them, and this is the person. I think, yeah, according to the introduction of the, the novel. The name is Kier, and he is a thief, or they are a thief. Um, right now, we're led somewhere, I think. Um, we're forced to follow them because, um, I think the scenario was, um, I was, uh, Vesper, I think is the name of my character, uh, got hit by Kier, and kind of got pushed, and their balance was off, so they fell. But Kier stopped them from falling, but they had no chance to actually let go of Vesper, and they just dragged Vesper away, and Vesper just followed Kier, and a sarcastic conversation ensued. Okay. Um, hold up. Okay. So, we are led right now to whatever place this is. I think this is like a part of the of, of the marketplace that is behind some kind of like wall. Uh, it, it must be an internal cavern of sorts. I don't know. I don't exactly remember the details, but that's how I recall the last part of the, of the, uh, part one that I played. Either way, I'm gonna try and stay because I'm kind of curious how Kier goes in this route. I have chosen this now. I, I think I have no choice. Maybe it, this is the intended person for the for this demo. Who knows? I haven't played this before. It's my first playthrough. At least the one until the end of the demo. I'm gonna stay. I can't try and flee now and risk the danger of a chase. And what of the authorities who were chasing us find me? Oh yeah, so I'm correct. Patience. Kier shows fast in and I follow close behind. Wherever we are, I feel safer with him than alone. We squeeze between two houses and end up on a busy, cramped road. The glowworm light that illuminates all the caverns is mostly blocked out by the homes on either side of us. Then we're in a small square of sorts. It's an open space with the most sturdy buildings of this area all around, and there's paths leading away in all directions. Wow, that's like slums, I guess? It's dark, but I can see glimpses of masks in the shutters that crack open to watch us. I forgot what the purpose of the mask was. Maybe it's like it's got filter or something, but, but I can open the half of the mask so that I could eat. So maybe it's it's to remain anonymous. Stranger. King! Hey, I'm home. This is the first time I've heard any words in his voice. It's such an abrupt change, I almost cannot believe it's the same man behind the mask. You Vesper, you just met him a while ago. Chill with the observation. You have you should have no expectation whatsoever with a person. But you're granted you're allowed to be surprised though. A child jumps from the low second story window, black and here's back. Oh that's kind of concerning. Hey! You man warning, you're gonna break my back. No way! You menace. He reaches around and pulls the kid off him, holding them up by one arm. The kid is kicking and wiggling and laughing. You better say sorry or you'll be stuck there forever. Haha, <laughs> sorry! Kira lets the kid down. Sorry, you're so old. Uh, the kid and a few of their friends melt away and Kira protests loudly, but even I can hear him smiling. Here, who's this? Someone flops up, flop my long sleeve, grabbing my arm. I twist away sharply. That's Vesper. Or so they told. Did I get to sleep yet? Nah, I like the silence. Hmm. Well, I think you've enjoyed enough of that. You never get enough. I am called Vesper. Though, you can decide whether you believe me. What's stranger doing here? Needed a decoy. 
They're, they're the right size. A decoy? Whoa, you gotta be quick on your feet to keep up with gear. Yeah, I was impressed. I thought I was gonna lose for sure. You're holding my hand. Like, Vesper's hand, not my hand. Get awkward. No, stop. Explain. Not yet. Not everyone can keep with me. You know that's not what I meant. What do you mean, a decoy? You know what a decoy is, right? I needed one. You fit the profile. He's evading. Why? You needed a decoy to deceive some kind of authority. You needed a decoy, and you are a thief. Yes, very smart. Was I a decoy for someone you're working with, or someone you stole? Oh, damn. That's a quick, quick one for sure. It sounds like I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you planning on doing with me when you were done, hmm? I was going to let you leave. It's such a blatant lie and my jaw drops. Does he really think I'll believe that? No way, you can let them leave now that they can find their way here. Oh, so I'm my prisoner now. Here, what were you thinking? I was thinking you'd play that guy, Griff, and let me be the hero. Looks like you're not on today. What? I was thinking that someone who can run dodge authorities is an asset. He faces me as he says that. What? What? He did just try to recruit me. <laughs> Here, you're insane! You can say that all you like. I'm right. We need- we need them to stay quiet. I wasn't planning on involving the authorities. And why I trust you when you say that? You might be naive enough to trust a stranger, but I know better. You're the one who asked me. So, we'll let them learn even more about us? That's about the shape of things. Once you're involved, you're the same type of criminal as the rest of us. And if I'm involved against my will? Hmm. Yeah. Enforcement here is just so kind and understanding. I'm sure they'll take you at your word. More people play masked than curious are gathering around. I don't know they're being so hostile to me and I didn't ask for any of this. Because you don't understand. If they get caught stealing, we get killed. The only way we can even start to trust you is if you've also got a noose around your neck. And I didn't ask for any of this. It doesn't matter. You... Let it go or let him have it. Hold up! Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I kind of don't see, the, don't see the difference, but I guess like the context for it is like letting it go as if I'm giving up or letting, have it, letting him having it begrudgingly might be the thing. So... I wonder if I am begrudgingly... I you manipulative gutter slime! Hey! I was nothing to you, and you decided, just for fun, I suppose, to destroy my life? You're effing horrible! Griff seems to seems to, to get me to shut up, but Kier's hand settles calmly on his shoulder. He knows he's earned this. I suppose to just some random insignificant stranger. What can my thoughts and feelings possibly have to do with anything? Well, if you need a noose on my neck, you have it. But don't think this means I'll ever be able to trust you. There's a moment of quiet. My heart is pounding and in my head, there's nothing breathing. I'm so angry I can hardly breathe. Are you done? Like a starving child, I'm not an adult whose existence is irreparably changed for the worse. You're blackmailing me. Don't you effin dare condescend to me, too. Here doesn't answer. Finally. There's a quiet moment. Everyone around doesn't to be coming to the same conclusion as me. I'm cornered. I don't have a choice in this. I keep my voice as flat and neutral as possible. I am not bumping her flatly and neutral. Not really. No. Then, what do I do? You run a few jobs with us. Get the news good and tight. And then... If you want to leave, you get yourself a new identity and you leave. You already put on a mask and picked a name once, right, Vesper? Right. Then, you can do it again. You sure about this, though? Yeah. With guts down for the count, we need a new lookout. Vesper's got what it takes. How do they know that? Also, crackle shoulders. I sure hope you don't think that counts as a compliment. When I compliment you, whatever happens, you'll know. Good to know. And we're not using ye because... Because ye is well. Don't be stupid, Griff. <laughs> Eve's just like, hi! Fine. I'll do what you need, and then I'm out. Hey, no need to make it sound like a prison sentence. Am I not being held here by will? Prisoners don't get paid. You will. What? We're pragmatic. We're not monsters. You do the work, 
you get paid. Can we really afford? <laughs> yes, Griff. I've heard we're getting our favorite visitor in a few weeks. We'll all be getting paid. Hell yes! What do you mean? Paid? Caught your attention, have I? I mean, we do need Muda. I think it's hard to know what my wages are going to be. The number Kira gives is not dog smacking high, but it's not low either. A few jobs could make for some comfortable living at the Leaping Bear for a long time. Oh, a Leaping Bear, I remember that name. Then again, it won't solve my big problem. Good enough? I have a counter offer. Then the idea in my head is happened, but I have to pursue it. Oh, uh -huh. are we negotiating? You're a thief. Yes, that's all established. Which means, if I want something instead of money, you could get it. Depends on the thing. Luna Riker. The crowd around us burst into a flurry of whispers. Well, at least they know it's important. Kier's voice changes suddenly. In the temporary I can't interpret. How can I do that? My voice is shrill. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, side note. Reading visual, no visual novels is so it, it's so fun, but like in a weird way. Okay. You know Icor? I do. Or what? Why should I trust you enough to say? Rude! Blackmailer. There's a long pause. That's a lot of jobs you're going to have to work. To earn something that pricey. Would I be able to make enough money to buy it? Not in your life, I don't think. Not with us, at least. Then, working for you is my best shot at getting it. <laughs> Griff, blah, 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 blah. I wonder what Griff looks like. I mean, it's just an outline, but possibly... They'll have their artwork visible in the release, most likely. Griff suddenly pulls out his cloak and he leans in. There's whisper, and I am not nearly close enough to hear it. Then they separate and Kiru runs his hands over his mask. It's a gesture of pure exhaustion. Fine. The whispers rise in intensity. You work with us. Get your Iker. He holds up a gloved hand. We have a deal? I slowly reach out. He clasps my hand and we shake on it. Deal. I'm tempted to... I'm tempted for a second to think this was too easy, but it really wasn't. Kiru calls out into the crowd. Someone go out with them to get their things! Pardon? We can't have you sneaking in and out all the time. Too dangerous. We just finished moving here as well. So I live here now? You'll get a room roll. Eventually, a volunteer comes forward. Together, we sneak out of the hidden community and return to the Leaping Bear. Oh, I won't get spend time with the Leaping Bear anymore. Oh. They refuse to talk to me and just follow me like a shadow into my room while I get the few things I left them. Some clothes, the odd knickknacks I've managed to acquire, my hygiene supplies. Okay, well. Then it's time to return the key. Hello. Oh, Vesper. Good to see you. Ready to pay for more time? You're definitely the reliable sort, so I can offer a good rate. Um, not this time. Sorry. I found somewhere else. A little closer to my goals. I dropped the key on the counter in front of Thank you, though. Leaping Bear was becoming a bit of a new home for me. Bruna is quiet for a second. Uh, Bruna is quiet for a few seconds. Then she drops her voice low, so low I can barely hear her. Do you need help? If that shadow of yours is unwelcome, Rufus can remove him. What? Oh. Oh, no. Things are fine. Rufus doesn't need to do anything. I'm fine. My new arrangements came as a surprise, but I did say yes to the offer. Never mind what kind of jurors they put me under. I did agree. Then good then. Never like seeing my clientele go places they weren't interested in going. Thank you for staying with us. Bruna's voice is a little more normal than I'm used to. I suppose now that I'm leaving, I may never see her again. Oh, bye, Bruna. It's a little disappointing. We have no real bonds here in the marketplace, but I was getting used to the leaping bear. Goodbye. I leave. My shadow close behind me. Eventually, they take the lead, guiding me to yet another hidden passage. Ooh, cool. How many ways of sneaking in and out there? <laughs> As we enter the cavern again, someone is there waiting for us. Hey! My shadow answers quickly. Don't mind us, just here to polish some sunstones. Then I'm being led back into the light, into the light network of pathways between closely built homes, until we're stopped in the square again. Here! I'm done being a babysitter! I see Kier, or at least his mask, turn to face up. Alre already? You don't have to sound so annoyed. I didn't have many earthly possessions to start with. Getting them was easy. Good. We have found a room for you too. You'll be staying with me. I'm sorry, what? Kier brings home a stray. He gets to take care of it. A stray? 
Okay. That's first a person. Using. I said that really sorry about that. The way he says it, it sounds like this is a frequent, frequent topic of discussion. Hold up, how many strays are there here? My home is small, but I get a lot of guests, so I keep a spare room. Ooh. Is it spicy, yes? Then, I suppose I should thank you for your hospitality? It would be nice. Maybe later. Gear suddenly stands next to me at my back, right between my shoulders. Let's get going. I've had a long A day and I need to take a break. Are you even going to be to relax with a stranger in your home? No, but it's nice to pretend. You start walking. By the way, welcome to the muscle. What a name for this place. The twisting paths between the buildings are a tangled mess, and there's no easy ladder to orient with myself in. Furthermore, ah, further from the square, the homes and businesses, such as they are, are packed so tightly together that the blue-green glowworm light from above doesn't reach us. How the heck do they- do they have fire? Instead, the warm flickering light of lamps and lanterns fills away. Okay, I got my answer. It's dim, but at this point, that is hardly a problem. My eyes are certainly used to the constant glow of the marketplace. Here we are. It's one, it's one home sandwich, slightly the two others, near indistinguishable from the rest. The only identifiable thing I notice are the closed shutters, painted blue instead of simply sealed raw wood. Kieran locks the door and holds it open for me. Oh, gentlemen, I see. Come inside. I found my best of bullseye, okay? I step in. It's small and cramped, as anyone would have guessed. But when Kieran lights a lantern, by the front door I can see that it is a comfortably arranged space. None of the furniture matches, but all of it works in some odd kind of weird harmony. Ebony. Compliment this, so I want to do this just because it feels like I'm gonna get offended. You have a nice home? That was nearly a compliment. I suppose I'll take it. That's all I could give right now. At least, I can say that I tried. There's a water closet behind the door. If you use the water up, you'll have to get more. I can show you where after I get some sleep. Your room is there. The key is in the lock. That's the key. Don't lose it. Understood. If you buy and keep your own food, that's fine. Otherwise, you contribute my budget and share what I get. Any other rules I ought to know? Don't be destructive. Don't need a racket while I'm sleeping. And, uh, if I leave? Go around the neighborhood as you like. If you try to leave without an escort, expect the watch to notice and stop you. I'm going to have something to eat before bed. You hungry? Uh, I'm glad you can't see the surprise on my face. Uh, are you sure? About letting you have a snack? About keeping me here. Uh, oh. Here's the thing, Vesper. I'm not worried about you murdering me in my sleep. My door locks the same as yours. And honestly, eternal rest isn't exactly something I'm dreading. He chuckles a little. If you decide to make yourself a problem, you can find somewhere else to put you. Itchy face. It makes me think, like, they're wearing masks. I shouldn't be complaining about my itchy face if they can take the itchiness of their mask. Griff knows a pretty obscure thunder goes straight down, if you're really unbearable. If it's all the same, I'd like to avoid that. It's easy enough to think of this as just another gas house, but here is no worse than Rufus. Intimidating, but, un but ultimately harmless. He steps toward what I assume to be a good place. The counter is exceptionally cluttered, but he is able to find his bowl with ease. A shallow wood bowl. Here. He takes a handful of whatever it is from bowl and then holds it out for me. Uh, this is... Deadly poison. <laughs> oh, I lost me. I'm, I'm easy. I'm a very easy person to be fast. Like, uh, I'm already laughing a while ago for some, some some other stuff, anyway. A closer look tells me that it's actually an assortment of dried fruits. Uh, it would be rude to not take it. No harm in getting a snack. It takes a few and carries a bowl away then. He doesn't reveal his mouth as he nibbles, instead threading the fruit under his mask. And doing the same. Well, get yourself some rest. Don't murder me in my sleep. I resist the temptation as best I can. Here departs suddenly, leaving himself and his handful of dried fruit into his bed. I hear the lock click decisively, and I am suddenly alone again. Free to indulge my curiosity privately, I do a quick tour of this front room. Here is certainly made an effort to make this a noble place. Space, but that seems to be as far as his efforts have gone. Not much for entertainment here, is there? Maybe he doesn't have friends over much. I continue nibbling. The sweet dark taste coats the back of my tongue. My search is quick in the end. It has to be with so little to lack. I slip into the dark guest bedroom as I'm an intruder. For a moment, I feel like I'm. It has the same cozy but spare feel of the main room, not a space I could call my own. Door locked, I give myself a permission to relax. 
Kier could very well have a second key to his room or choose to break or bypass the lock in some way, but there was little use worrying about it. I'm already so keyed up from stress that adding the possibility of being murdered in my sleep would make resting impossible. What have I gotten myself into? I've been recruited into a gang of states against my will. A gang that likely steals to survive. But there's one that leaves me deeply uncomfortable. If I was a decoy for something Kier stole, that means Kier was stealing a person. Oh. Okay, I didn't understand that. Oh, I know. Like, I was thinking decoy of like um vesper would be the one the authorities would be hunting down but then now that i now that they're saying it's a person that he that he helped steal huh so i guess it was a person that's trying to escape they helped escape the person and the way that they did it was to divert the attention away from that person and use the vesper so it's a, it's possible okay could I live with myself helping to steal people? Oh, maybe it's human trafficking, so it's not exactly a person that escaped, but rather a person delivered. Ugh, human trafficking. Uh, uh I mean, I, I would go for this originally, but we're in the marketplace. I'd go for the holistic route. The cold fingers of reality close around my heart. There is no reason I can imagine justify stealing people. Stealing for survival, I can understand, but not that far. I swallowed hard. Trying to chase these thoughts away. I'm not going to sleep at all, am I? I follow the motions of getting ready for bed. I even take off my mask while I'm careful to lie down with my back to the door. And after some hours of trying to find a comfortable position, I must have fallen asleep because Kira wakes me up with a sharp knock, with sharp knocks to the door. Knock, knock, knock. In the days that follow, I get used to the pace of life in Mousehole. I am, as promised, left to my own devices for the most part. I can sense people getting tense when they towards any of the myriad it, but I'm not about to test my luck with an ill-considered escape attempt. Here, it seems, is a popular one. He's constantly being called this way or that, attending to roof repairs or playing quarrels. But that is only when I see him, which is quite rare. Rare. <laughs> Where Where we are, quite often, ships that pass in the night. In my first days, I was largely ignored. None of the regular residents wanted to interact with me. Yeah, you enjoy the place. I have to admit, it nearly drove me mad. Yeah, according to how your personality is, you're kind of a person that can't stay alone for too long. But once I proved to their satisfaction that I'm not a deranged maniac, the people seemed keen to get an additional set of hands in their work. I've chopped vegetables and hauled water and watched babies and held a lot of ladders in place. It's a hard work, but it conquers my boredom and gives me a chance to make small talk. Jesper, I need a hand! On it! Shale, one of the friendliest people in Mousehole, is stacking crates near an exit passage. Not sure how much I can help. I don't think my reach is longer than yours. I just need a little more support so I can hop. They do a short hop and shove the crate into place. If you got time, I could use a hand a little longer. My schedule is packed, but I can get the social engagement or two to help. Shale's chuckle is gratifying. Very funny, but aren't you going to the strategy meeting soon? Um, strategy meeting? You're running lookout, aren't you? I believe that was the arrangement, but this is the first time I'm hearing about a- Hey! Vesper! We gotta talk strats! Let's speak of the devil. Looks like I'm doing this on my own. I wouldn't want you to skip that social engagement. Thank you, Shale. Maybe there will be some barrels we can roll around later. Make up for this. I think there's an empty one around here somewhere. The kids took it to roll each other in. That I would love to see. Are you ignoring me, Esper? Not in slightest. You know how much I love talking with you. Bye, Shale. Bye. I make my way to over here. I'm a little more comfortable following him through the narrow winding paths of most, most of Mouse Hole now. Jeez. Uh, delusional all of a sudden. What were you doing there? Trying to give Shale a hand. Makes sense. Shale was always finding tasks to get the kids involved in community work. You're probably right, but I resent that remark. Anyway, get moving. Everyone's on you. You see that? Like, I can really keep telling you. This is the first time hearing about a meeting. Then we'll need to fix our communication, too. Hey. Waiting for me to ask where are you holding a secret meeting and I not even know is a possibility is not reasonable. Yeah, 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 moving. We don't into one of the buildings on the square. Here has a duck particularly low. The door frame is unusually short and he is a fairly tall man. I guess I'm short. Hey, Gear. Finally found them? I wasn't hiding. Found them just fine, thanks. I wasn't hiding. They seat at the table with several other individuals. The room is extremely dark even for a underground for an underground room. But I think I can see hints of this being a pub or a bar of some kind. Real quick, Vesper. These are Lave and Halo. 
for lobby. Cannot in his head. You already know Griff. Yeah, we'll see. You're a guesser. Likewise. What if the other two gives me a slow, casual wave? Lavernia, call me Lav. My girl here is Halo. The other one, Halo, gives me a near imperceptible nod. She's lead in close to Lav. Not the talk of this sort of frozen. Okay, Griff, what's the brief? Oh, doggy. Nope. We've got a commission. F off. She's already approved it. Don't worry. It's fine, Lav. You gave me the full rundown of the client. They've got a commission to relieve the auctioneer of a few choice pieces. Uh, not the auctioneer, I'm not crazy, the auctioneer. That means crossing the ruby walls. What? You've done that half a dozen times, and nearly died each time. We're not dead yet. Now you two care, you're supposed to be sensible. I am being sensible. This is a huge potential payoff, and we have an in. Uh, I'm gonna this one. I don't fully understand. I'm not about to interrupt this discussion without good reason. Leave. Man, I keep on butchering their name. Fine, we'll do the extremely dangerous job behind the ruby walls. Here. That's the spirit. So we cross the walls easy, and we all know where the auctioneer's house is. Our inn is the new build being done at the club next door. It's an easy climb from there to the balcony, which doesn't have a lock. You and Halo are going to find and lift the pieces for after. You and me are going to be events and distraction. And Vesper will try to live up to Gup's example. Not a terrible plan. Not a good plan either. Halo's voice is so ghostly, I'm not really sure I heard it. Oh, wait, how does it just not? Okay. Anyway. Not a good plan either. Maybe that's the good one? Obviously, it sounds dumb without the important details. Grim draws a map on the tabletop with a stick of chalk and carefully walks us through each step. For the most part, I understand. My role is, if I else, comically easy, stand by, signal if there are people around. Okay. You with us, Bur? I don't have much of a choice in that, do I? He's asking if you understand. Almost everything. Almost? I believe that the auctioneer's form is the level above Ape's pleasure parlor. Something you did not explain. And I don't know what there would be was for. How do you not know that? I've been under the mountain less than a month, and you're locals. That's how. Fine. The walls are a series of walls that have a vein of raw rubies in them in the main market cavern. Well, really? There's gates that theoretically anyone can go through. But in practice, it is, it's a space for the rich and beautiful? Exactly. And it's heavily guarded along the walls, hence the danger. Yep. Now I understand. And the curry will speak up immediately if there's something you don't know. You don't know. They're always telling you not to talk. Now this... I'm serious. I'm not risking my neck to save you if you're in any stupid situation. You get in trouble, you're on your own. So I'm an acceptable loss. Exactly. Let's get ready to go. <laughs> I made Griff quite happy. Like, happily voiced. I mean, I don't mind. To be honest. The four of them stand up. I follow their lead. My cloak is just barely fine enough to be worn beyond the ruby walls. But the other four get the chance to fancy themselves up. God. Back in these awful things. Here holds up a heavy, richly embroidered... Imagining him in it is comical. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at me, Vesper. Yes. Ha! <laughs> and you, Lav? She shrugs. They're right. You look stupid in that. It doesn't match. It really doesn't. I keep telling you, buddy, you're made of iron, not silver. I'm so ready in this guy. I wonder what they look like. I mean, visually, I can't see them. So, ugh, curious. Like, you're one to talk. You look like a child going through daddy's closet. Your short stature and casual posture leaning into care is completely at odds with his with the jeweled hood and fattened cape. Wait, what is the concept of, like, jewelry and luxury for these people? Like, it, it sounds absurd. Knowing what he's like honestly makes it even funnier. You look like he robs him without a lantern. Leave him be. I'm gonna leave him be. I'm not close to that guy. I bite my tongue. You're stating everything about as well as could be expected, but I doubt he'd enjoy my taking a job at him. Things settle down again. I don't know why you put up with you. Here pats his shoulder firmly. Neither do I. There's some more scat laughs, but the atmosphere of the room slowly turns more serious. Halo and Lave are love. He's love. Are checking each other's disguises, ensuring their weapons are not visible to pass her by. Here is checking over his own knife carefully. It's beautiful and likely quite old, unlike the rest of his daily wear. Did I be armed? It's not a good idea, obviously. 
I am a rancorous and would be far more likely to be stabbed with my own knife than use it to properly defend myself. Still, I cannot help but feel a twinge of fear. The knife won't make me feel less frightened. But it's hard to convince myself of that fact. The rest of the preparations happen in, a, in anticipatory silence. <laughs> I read that differently in my head, okay. Ready? Then let's move. We walk in a loop to yet another exit. I have yet to fully count the ways into and out of mouse hole, but there must be at least half a dozen. Like half a dozen? That's a lot. Maybe for like, I was already a lot. It's another narrow passage that leads into the back room of the shop. From there, we can exit through the storefront and step into the busy walkways of the marketplace. Um, here. Look alive. In any other circumstances, we would be a deeply strange group. A gang of well-dressed strangers walking together but not talking. But this is hardly the strangest sight in the, ma in the marketplace. Meh, place. <laughs> With a bird mask contortionist performing in a tiny cage and a pair of drunkards fighting in just one of the crossroads we walk through. Things are as lively as ever. We passed the church on our way to the central caverns. Was it only a few days ago I was standing there looking for some clue to start me on my hunt? As we entered the largest cavern, the heart of the marketplace where our start and my we walked close together. Alright, you know the drill. Stop. We meet across from the pearl choker. That's the name of the place? Vesper, you're with me. <laughs> Lav and Halo are gone in a second, melt into the crowd. Griff glances back at Kier for a second before doing the same. Don't trust me not to run off. Not in the slightest. Plus, you're new to this. I might be able to give you some pointers. What makes you think I'm new to this? You're paying a lot of attention to small details. The kind that are easy to ignore when you're used to this work. Fair enough. I have never planned a theft before. <laughs> I don't know. What does Vesper... Uh, what's Vesper's history anyway? I'm pretty... I, I don't want to put sort of like a backstory for Vesper. Because I want it to be coming from the, the very story itself. From the very little novel itself. But I'm kind of clueless what kind of person Vesper is. So I've never worked in an organized group to steal before. I've never planned a theft. I mean, you can choose the second one because that's more eloquent. <laughs> I've never worked with others in a project like this. But you have done this kind of work for. I thought we were supposed to leave our surface life behind out here. Leave it all behind your life. You're still quite comfortable working with us. Well, you have to survive somehow, right? And I don't... I think the auctioneer is someone who will suffer greatly when we're done with her. No. You won't have to feel bad for when we're done. My boy is breaking. I'm like a teenager. Okay, hold up. She's someone who would sell literally anything if it means getting a cut. And what will we do with our finds? Sell it to a different asshole. We'll do anything for a cut. I think you'll like him though. He's got a tongue as quick as yours. Is that all you think I am? Maybe if you talk less, I'd understand you more. Not a chance. For the record, I, mean, I guess there's no like daily dallying with the in betweens of the story. Never saw Vesper talking too much, but they are talking. Here, worth a try. And here are the walls. Take them in. My first impression is that they're not they're not special. So walls about twice as tall as the average person, smooth enough to be nearly impossible to climb barehanded. And then I notice the flickering light. The rubies in the stone have been dug around and polished where they sit so they they catch the light. The glimmer like candles but the color is richer and redder than any fire. There are hundreds, possibly thousands of them. It's subtle and beautiful. And here's our gate. Resolve. Kier seems to set his shoulders and marches forward, leaving me to hurry and catch him. Beyond the ruby walls, things are still beneath, and it's not as though there's anything to muffle the sounds of the rest of the marketplace. But there is still a noticeable change. The rest of the marketplace is people hawking their wares, shouting at potential buyers and cajoling them to buy. Here, the people standing in front of the businesses stop. They offer samples or display their wares, pose at and flirt with passerby. Goodbye. But there's no shouting. I suppose if you have a business here, you don't need to shout to get attention. It really is different. There's nothing in the world like the jewel box. It might have been said in admiration, but Kier's voice is oozing bitter disdain. I did not say that with bitter disdain, I just read it. Kier and I walk side by side, taking a few turns to avoid the direct path of the pearl choker. He stops to look at, at perfume bottles and little ivory statuette. I pause near a window blazing with light, a lantern shop. You know the plan. I know the plan. You know where to hide. I know where to hide if you foul up everything. But you won't, will you? From your lips to the moon. Don't make me run again. Or what? Or I'll be very cross. Be so my beating heart. Anything but that. Ugh. Ah, uh, wish I'm out. You'll stay safe, won't you? I have no plans on dying. What about not getting eternal rest? I'm not afraid of dying. I still don't want to. With my luck, I get done and, and it'd hurt like a bee. 
For the record, like, side note, if you're going to perish, like, be a deceased person, might as well go without any pains because it's a hell of a experience to leave the world with painful sorrow. Like, physical or, like, mental or whatever, like, anything physical. Like, painfully. And he'll stay safe. Here stops and turns to me for stones in the river, people around us, who pay us no money. Here reaches out and then gives me one blue soft pat on the top of my head. Aw, oh, take a kitty. Stay safe. You haven't seen the half of what I can do. His voice is warm and confident. As a pearl chauffeur, Kier slips away from me to enter through the front door. I slip between the pleasure parlor and the neighboring gambling hall. Okay. This is a quick pause, because now we are entering some kind of story and maybe supposedly might be important for the story, at least here in Kier's route. So, <laughs> I was correct in thinking we are following Kier's route now, that we actually followed through with him. So maybe this is a part of the demo. Of sorts just like get a taste of like the scenarios that will happen or you will like encounter i wonder if like further on if you do encounter another character within another person's route you actually like veer away or remain with the current route that you're in either way this is gonna be part two of obscura like hopefully we get to part three and have more enjoyable stuff i don't know what is with the chapters but we'll see how it goes and uh thanks so much for tuning in hopefully like this part of the chapter is this might actually be like a filler episode, so cuts may be made. And um, you guys who enjoy the visual novel side of the world, tune in later for part 3. Uh, support the devs. I think they're still ongoing with the development. I don't know if it's done or not. Either way, we'll discuss our fancy. Signing out. Toodles! And that's the end of the video. Cross our fancy here reminding you that you can just drop a like, subscribe, if you want to share, be my guest. But I would rather appreciate a comment down below, whatever thoughts you have about the video. Possibly this is a VOD from my twitch.tv slash streaming, and um, if you want to hang out, go pass by there. See ya!